Taylor, what's some rants? To, what's what's the thing that was? Oh yeah, so I I don't know if I'd say I'm fired up. I'm sad, man. I'm honestly sad because I was thinking about it today, and um, because I was I was watching or listening or something about coverage, and I was like, man, there's like no people there. Like there was no spectators, and I'm definitely one person thing. that's like people like the sky is falling disc golf's over because there's no spectators that's definitely super overblown but like thinking about this tournament specifically like that was the draw like you go back to when gbo used to be like you know there was majors super important tournaments and gbo was up there like people cared a lot about gbo back in the day because it was huge and they used to have the am side like you could go it was a destination trip you could go get like 10 rated rounds in three days because there was flex starts there's the am gbo there's the block party like it was this big spectator event which is like i was thinking about too i mean i've talked about before how like the heart is just kind of gone from dd of like the robert mccall eric mccabe like bobby disc golf answer man days were like I feel like they were kind of foundation before foundation where they were just like super plugged into the community. Everybody loved, you know, the content they were putting out. And it's just so weird to me that in a few years, like that's just all gone. Like yeah. nobody cares about this tournament anymore. Everybody's talks about the course being dog when it was built for spectators that they used to have. It's just kind of sad, man. It's sad to me that like just the mighty have fallen with this tournament. So I don't know. I was trying to like brainstorm like ways they could get it back. But I honestly was like how I know ways in the investment group. Like I just feel like it, it ain't coming back. I know ways. Corey's got it. I mean, that's your cue you to go ahead and explain it. what yeah, you, you want. For it. Dude, speak to that, man. Speak to that. Tell us about it. I don't know if I want to. <laughs> okay. Um, Eric McKay was talking recently on, um, or yet yesterday with his pract- uh, practice round with um, Drew Gibson, and he talked a little bit about it. Apparently, they're redesigning the course, or a lot of the course. Um, Jeff Corns is uh, building a lot of stuff to hopefully have that happen. Because Eric McCabe was like, Drew, it, for a casual round, do you ever want to go play DDO? And Drew's right. like, heck no, I There's never want to no go way. play DDO. <laughs> yeah. And so Eric was like, we're trying to redesign it so that when it's not tournament time, you can go and have an enjoyable time at the course uh, and not just die. Like, yeah. like, we just played New London. We'll talk about it later. But like, New London would never be our go-to course after work. New yeah, New I was thinking about that too. Like, like when we were leaving Charlotte, yes, like would. if I had the option, like if I lived in Charlotte and I would like, if I had the option on a random Saturday with the boys to go play Hornet's Nest or play Eager Beaver again, I'm probably going to Eager Beaver four out of five times. And like once a yeah. month, I'm gonna be like, okay, yeah. I'm mentally ready to go get absolutely destroyed at Hornet's Nest, right? Like, I I definitely think that's a big part, especially when you think about like Jeremy Rusko bought the whole property. Like there's a lot of investment into that property and it's a big problem to your investment if the course is not fun to play. Like if it's pro level or like pro tour eligible, that's one thing, but like that's only good for a week out of the year, right? No. Yeah. I'm telling you guys, on random lunch breaks in the summer when toboggan's open, I'll just go play a couple holes. Yeah, you're a masochist, though. Yeah, okay. you're you're just a, a, a freak, a freak of nature, bro. You I guess just so. Like to go. If I live near <laughs> New London, brother, I'd be playing that all London, the time. If we played New London, bro, it took us like four and a half hours. We walked five points. Because I was waiting for you, dude. Dude, I was tired as all get out. Look at bro. these guns. I was waiting for you. Dude, there, we'll, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. But there was multiple <laughs> times where I was just like, I'm not throwing a shot. You guys just threw two fine shots. I can't give us a better look. And Corey was like, throw the frisbee, man. Throw the frisbee. And I was like, I want you to experience New London. Dude. I experienced it, bro, bro. I got I got slaughtered. <laughs> Nothing was flipping because I was scared of the OB. I mean, I play Iron Hill a lot. I'm not going to lie. And Iron it's Hill is fun. Arguably one of the toughest courses to play. Yeah. Yeah, but you play. I mean, I mean, I definitely think there's a time and place to like, like, yeah, I'm ready to get absolutely destroyed and like try to get better. But is that me like even 30 percent of the time? Probably not. No. Listen, I I think Iron Hill is a perfect example where I had so much fun on the slightly shorter layout. It's the FPO layout. The FPO FPO layout. It was such a fun course, but I knew I would just get obliterated on the long. So like, if they could do a similar thing there, stupid you're going to have a great time there where like I played it. And even as a player who does not have that much distance, 
and I, I just threw it and had a great, like I had so much fun. I was like, this is such a cool course. I would be here every weekend. Yeah. Um, I mean, so I, I know too, like that. going back to, um, going back to like the, I was a big disc golf answer, man, like DD fan back in the day. Right. So I listened to that a lot and they talked about a lot like Emporia, you know, then I've also talked about was like destination place, like us going to Charlotte. Like I used to talk to my friends about like, yo, let's go to Emporia and like play all these courses. They have like 90 courses in a town that takes five minutes to drive anywhere. And they're like, we have, you know, super nice courses that Eric McCabe's put a ton of effort in designing. You know, what course is always full Hammond park, the little pitch and putt par three course. Cause it's fun. So I, I definitely agree that like, I don't know if they can alter that course to be that, but now that you have the whole property, you need to be putting something like that in like something that's much more accessible, a lot more fun. And then also I, of course is like, you know, Hornet's Nest Short or like Angry Beaver and Eager Beaver coexisting. I think a great thing that does is if you're new, you will play the par three course, but you get to see what it could be like what disc golf yeah. can grow for you. If you then become better and put the time in like, Oh, one day I'll get to go play that course and not, you know, yeah. shoot plus 50. To be honest yeah. though, who is playing the long one at Hornet's Nest? Cause the right. pros don't even play that. It's ridiculous. It was built different. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I definitely, I definitely agree. I think if they did something like that, I think that helps. I think they said they're like reworking like the restaurant on, on there to be somewhere people might just go for food right. and also then happen to have that. And so doing stuff like that is good. But it, when Eric McKay was talking about it, it looked like it sounded like a lot of things were going to be changing really quickly that might help improve that for the off part of the year. It's Which, funny yeah, that you bring that the video now. Yeah, Just it's funny you thoughts. bring this up, Taylor, because I was thinking it uh, the last round, but I was like, eh, maybe I'm just like not, you know, maybe there's more people there than I realize. But you even like clearly noticed it too. Mm -hmm. And because um, they brought back the amateur tournament, right? Yes. Yeah. Because so, that's when it kind of stopped being like this huge event. They're like realized their mistake, but I feel like it was almost too little too late. <laughs> yeah. So I was pretty disappointed. When I was saying that, I was like, you know, when do they actually pull the cord on DDO? Because the, we've talked about how we want to be putting these pro tournaments around people that are going to want to come and spectate. Right. So if people aren't coming to DDO anymore, they can't make money off of tickets. Why even keep going? I think they I, need to. I think they need, need to come to Charlotte more often. Yeah, dude. Yeah. But I, 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 yeah. I do think that they need to like once they implement these changes it might end up being like the dream place really i mean if yeah, they I mean, do I think like it could be sick if they do it well if they do a pitch and putt a medium style course like something that we would be like oh yeah dude i shot even on and then they have the pro like the big dog that means like people would actually show up for the pitch and putt or a normal course and be able to look over and be like dude that's the that's the pro. It's just such a and different, then... it's such a different dynamic now because <laughs> they don't put out, like, I, I genuinely mean like back then, like you'd watch them play you like those courses on Did YouTube. Did you giggle videos. because you used the word dynamic? Yeah, dynamic. Yeah. <laughs> but you'd watch, I mean, it's, it's the foundation effect, right? Where like you guys wanted to go play New London. You wanted to go play Peak View because you see those courses all the time and you want to see like how you would play these yeah. courses. It was the same thing before when you saw all these practice rounds, trilogy challenges that they're doing at these courses. Like, oh, I want to go like play that and experience that. Like that's how, I mean, I used to have that same feeling towards like random courses in Emporia that I don't even know the names of now because they don't do anything anymore because they decided yeah. it was too expensive. Get it, Taylor. I'm fired Absolutely. up today, bro. I don't know. On, an, on another note, you guys want to go to Emporia, Kansas? No. When they finish <laughs> Champions Landing. <laughs> that is the most depressed no I've ever heard in my entire life. Dude, it's only 15 hours and 29 minutes for me, man. I can think I, I, we've already done this before on the podcast, but I can name plenty of other places I'd want to go to before. I think yeah, five definitely. other places I'd want to go to before I go to Emporia. Yeah, I, I, I know. I agree with you. <laughs>